Hey everybody, uh, for this video we're going to be talking about trigeminal neuralgia, explaining what it is, some ways that potentially it can happen, and also going through what can be done to make sure that it's treated effectively to reduce this horrible pain. So if anyone has never heard of it, trigeminal neuralgia essentially is a, a stimulation and an interference on the nerve that supplies information to the trigeminal nerve. And the trigeminal nerve supplies a lot of the information around the face, including to the nose, to the eye, and a lot of the skin around here, and even down to the jaw as well. So essentially try and think of it as just kind of everything around this kind of region can be supplied by the trigeminal nerve. Again, because it has the name tri, it's broken down to these three parts which will be affecting these three different zones of the face. Trigeminal neuralgia is a very specific condition where the nerve, the trigeminal nerve, is being affected, whether this is due to some level of breakdown, such as because of a virus, or because of bacteria, or because of an infection, or very commonly where there's some sort of impediment and the nerve is being compressed at some point, affecting these areas. Now, one of the big problems with trigeminal neuralgia is it's excruciatingly painful. It's commonly been called by many people the suicide disease because it leads to such levels of pain, of suffering, and depression that comes along with it as well. There's many people who have stories, there's actually books being even written about it, such as What Time Tuesday, which really explain the effects of having this condition and trying to live with this kind of condition. So for anyone who's experienced it, it is very extreme. For the level where this can happen, of course nerves, they're kind of like wires in the body and they can be affected in different parts. Very commonly it can be affected in the top part of the neck, but sometimes it can be due to some level of infection, say if there was some sort of infection in the nervous system. In those cases, it can be more common that it may affect just one part of the head, say one part of those three trigeminal nerves that are coming out. However, if it's something where it may be originating more, say in the neck, where that nerve starts, in the cranial nerves, then it's something where it can potentially affect all those three zones. For people who are suffering from trigeminal neuralgia, it's very common that they may have a very sensitive face as well. So it's not just that, say, pain may start. It may start with something simple, such as stroking something against their face, a cold wind, you know, going through air con, a hot sunny day. All of these things will lead to an overstimulation of the body or even a stimulation in a way that it would be called incorrect, which is called allodynia. So for all of these problems, again, it starts with something very commonly simple, but it can be very difficult then for the person to continue on their day. Number one, because it's very painful, or number two, for a lot of people, it becomes a lot of aversion, and they will start then start to change their behaviors in their normal day because they realize if they don't do certain things or they do certain things, it can cause this problem. For example, many years ago, I had a patient when I was in my first year of practice, and she used to have extreme facial neuralgia and going through this trigeminal neuralgia and facial pain. And one of the problems that she had is that for her, she couldn't sleep in a bed. She actually had to sleep sitting up. She was in her, I think, the early 70s at this point. She had to sleep sitting up in her armchair in the living room because if she lay down on a pillow and if it was just the wrong way of, of interacting with the skin on the face, it would cause extreme pain and she would be up the rest of the night. And because, of course, it wasn't easy for her to sleep, even though it was still better than sleeping in a bed, by her sleeping sitting up, she was only getting a few hours of sleep every night. So it is something where it can be very extreme and cause a lot of problems, not just symptomatically and for the feeling, but also causing problems in the day-to-day -day life because you have to start to modify your behaviors to prevent this from happening or to try and do something when it does actually happen. One of the good things is, especially for myself as a, as a chiropractor, one who's specializing in that top part of the neck where those brainstem, but sorry, the, uh, the cranial nerves are exiting from the brainstem, is that we do see a lot of improvements of patients who do have facial neuralgia. Again, it's something that can be excruciating and can have a big effect on their life, but by making sure that things are working better in the nervous system, it takes the pressure off of that area. Of course, things need to be excluded. We need to make sure that there's no presence of any kind of virus, no kind of bacteria, or anything else which may be underlying and affecting the inflammation process in the body. However, when we do our scans, our nerve scans, this will let us know if it's something that we can help with. And if it is, it's something where we have great results, helping patients to really get a chance to take their lives back and not have to modify their behaviors and comprehend different ways where they can try and do everything in their daily life just to make it through the day. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. You can give us a call at 8438-9550 or help, uh, call us or email help at uh, email help at vitalitychiropracticcenters.com and we'll make sure we get back to you as soon as possible.